The endpoint of a acid-base titration can be determined by monitoring the pH over the titration period. In this example here, we see that we have um, a conical flask with some HCl here, and we have our pH electrode in here, monitoring the pH at the moment. It's, it's one which is consistent with that of a strong acid. And the uh, burette contains a 0.2 molar NaOH. So if we start the animation, we'll see what happens as the NaOH is added to the HCl. So initially, the uh, electrode just senses the presence of the HCl, and therefore the initial uh, pH is recorded as prop 1. As you begin the titration, um, a, a volume of NaOH is added, and as it's added, um, the uh, pH starts to increase. This is because some of the acid has been used up. And this trend continues. The pH starts to increase slightly. Again, 10 ml has been added. It's now pH 1.24. And 15 mils, here we can see it's 1.40. Now, as the endpoint approaches, we'll see a steep rise in the graph. Now, this is because um, the NaOH at the endpoint has totally neutralized the HCl. Therefore, there is no NaOH or HCl present at the equivalence point when they're both completely neutralized. All that's present is um, a salt and water. But as a one drop of NaOH is added for the endpoint, we see a sharp rise, as you see here, in the graph um, to approximately pH 12, which eventually levels out then to approximately the pH of the um, of the NaOH itself. So the endpoint then, how are you going to obtain the endpoint? Well, the endpoint is got from the mid part of the steep part of the slope. So again, we can come down then off the graph and we can estimate the pH endpoint uh, from the graph. Okay, so I hope this gives you a little bit of explanation into potentiometric titrations. Um, you'll be carrying one out using an ultra titrator, but I just wanted to, to go over the acid-based titration potentiometrically again. Thank you.